Um, it it uh, triggers a whole series of reactions, and it seems to be a, a physical chemical process that uh, sort of uh, stirs up a cell to uh, recognize a threat and uh, set off a, a chain of reactions. And it's the things that it sets in, in into action that really cause the the chronic accumulating uh, damage, degenerative damage. Uh, it's one of the first things it does uh, on exciting a cell uh, is to uh, cause the cell to take up calcium and to activate the synthesis of nitric oxide. Right. And uh, the uh, uh, nitric oxide and the cell excitation that goes with uh, absorbing calcium uh, trigger other reactions. And uh, a small amount of, of endotoxin can uh, stimulate the intestine to contract more. But if, if the cells are getting overloaded with it, uh, uh, that and possibly other irritants can cause cells to produce so much nitric oxide that uh, the nitric oxide becomes a major metabolic disruptor and uh, will cause the intestine to lose the ability to contract. Hmm. And it will uh, poison the uh, respiratory apparatus so that cells can't make energy to fight back. And at that point, uh, with uh, increased nitric oxide and reduced energy and taking up calcium, uh, uh, the cells also take up water. Right. And then they become basically non-functioning to a degree. Um, yeah, they, um, they're under stress, and if the body can deliver enough energy to them quickly, they can excrete the water and the calcium and turn off the nitric oxide hmm. and uh, return to normal functioning. But when they swell up, uh, another place that the textbooks uh, give a very simplified uh, mistaken idea of what is involved in uh, bowel damage uh, from endotoxin, uh, they talk about the leakage between cells uh, as if the cells lose the glue that holds them uh, in contact with each other, so holes open up between cells. That does happen, but uh, it isn't necessarily the, the, the worst way that the endotoxin uh, gets into the cells and, and passes through the cells. The, the whole structure of the cell, the cytoplasm, as it takes up water, um, instead of being uh, fat-like uh, and tending to exclude water and uh, prefer to absorb fats, the uh, introduction of this uh, sugar connected to a fat acts like a soap and mm -hmm. makes the cell... Uh, tend to uh, admit not only more water, but uh, uh, pretty much uh, anything that is in its environment. So the whole substance of the cell becomes uh, kind of spongy and leaky. Right. And uh, when, when this starts affecting the whole organism, that kind of change uh, occurs all through the body uh, once the stuff has passed through the the lining of the intestine and crosses uh, across capillaries and uh, gets into the bloodstream, then the uh, endotoxin uh, starts doing the same thing to any cell it comes to. Mm -hmm. And so it will leak out of capillaries uh, no matter where it is in the bloodstream uh, if the liver hasn't filtered it. Uh, so if it happens to reach the brain, it'll cause the brain capillaries to leak whatever is in the bloodstream. And uh, so it can contribute to multiple sclerosis. And uh, the um, endotoxin leaking 
into the brain does the same thing. It triggers the release of nitric oxide and uh, a whole chain of of chemical reactions that uh, uh, every organ has its particular way of responding to the endotoxin, but there's a generality, no matter what the organ, uh, there are, are basic defense reactions that um, will occur not only to endotoxin, but to any a radical threat to the survival of the cell so that X-rays and gamma rays will produce essentially the same kind of change in brain cells or bowel cells that uh, endotoxin does. Hmm. And so if, if you're uh, overexposed to X-rays, for example, you'll get constipated uh, the same way that overexposure to endotoxin will cause constipation.